Hello, hello. Melbourne's gardens are at a crisis point. What's happened is that everywhere plants are burning. They're, they're dying, they're dropping their foliage. My phone's running hot, people are asking me, what's happening, the fruit's falling off my trees, the leaves are falling off my trees, and you've just got to walk around the streets like I am now and have a look. Look at this maple here, that maple is worth hundreds of dollars. It's a beautiful red weeping maple, and it's about 70% defoliated, and most of the leaves on it are dry and burnt. It's in trouble, it needs help. And look at this English box hedge here. It looks like it's been in the toaster, it's all brown and burnt. Now most people believe that this is the heat that's caused this. It's not the heat, it's a lack of moisture. What we need to do is show the people of Melbourne how to water and how to save their gardens. Gardens cost thousands and thousands of dollars and take years of effort. Why lose them for the lack of a little bit of water? The problem's everywhere in Melbourne and it's even affecting well-established plants like this beautiful old lily pilly. Now what's happened with this lily pilly is that for several months it's been drying out, the soil's been drying out, and then the really hot weather's come along, it's tried to draw up some soil sort of moisture and it isn't any, and on really hot days the leaves have just burnt. And, and, and this tree's in trouble even though it's been well established here for perhaps 15 years. This is typical of the problem facing Melbourne gardeners. This garden owner has asked me to come and help them with this particular problem here, and what's happened is that the this tree has been, these, this hedge here has been a beautiful thick hedge, been here for 15 or 20 years, but all of a sudden the foliage is dropping off. You can see all the foliage down here on the ground. The foliage is just raining off this tree, and if you give the tree a shake, you'll see leaves falling off it. There's, there's dead leaves just coming on the tree all the time, and, and it's in trouble. What's wrong is that it's been drying out for months, and it's run out of subsoil moisture, and it needs a deep watering. So. Here's how to tackle this problem effectively and save this important bit of landscaping. This is this garden, the whole garden is dependent on having this lovely green hedge to give it privacy and give it a lovely cool enclosed feeling. This home gardener, like most home gardeners, use, is using a little water saving gun like this and a half inch hose. Now this could be good for conserving water, but when you've got your landscape dying, it's not effective enough. Hardly any water comes out of it and you can stand here for hours and not do the job. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of it. This is what most people have. It's a half inch hose with a little water gun on it. And these water guns make quite a strong hissing noise. And that hissing noise is the sound of the water flow being stopped. And when you're watering, what you don't want is the water to stop. You want the water to come out of the tap, down the line and in on the plants. And you want a lovely, soft, gentle flow of water just wetting your plants. As much water as you can coming out as softly as you can. This gun shoots too hard makes too much noise and doesn't let enough water out, you're kind of wasting your time standing here with one of these. This one here, this is a rosette, and surprisingly this makes, it's much bigger, it makes almost no noise, it's connected to it, we've, got, we've run a three quarter inch hose instead of a half inch hose, and what's amazing is we did a bucket test earlier, and what happened is that this one here took um, 52 seconds to fill a, a 10 litre bucket, and this one here only took 13 seconds to fill the same bucket. This means that this one puts out four times as much water. So if you stood there for 15 minutes watering, you're going to put out four times as much water. You're going to do much more good for your garden. The next important step in saving these plants is using a liquid soil wetter. Now what you'll notice is when the ground's very dry and you put water on, it won't go in. It runs over the top. It just sits there in little lots and it won't go in. And the same happens as you go down deep in the soil, the soil is waterproof and we have to break that down and that's done with a liquid, don't use a powdered one, use a liquid soil wetter and what you do is you mix it up like this and I'm going to use a nice generous dose. Mix it up, stir it into the water like this, so stir it in and then water it on and you water it on just not in the garden bed, these trees here, their foliage is out to here so the root zone is out to here so I'm going to water this whole area and, and this will help us, and what will happen with each watering, it will push the soil water down deeper and deeper into the ground because we have to get the, soil, the water down or the moisture down at least a metre in the ground to save these trees. Now I'm, I'm watering out here under the drip zone and then I'm going to get right in underneath and all around the base and get a really good generous coating a soil wetter in there before I start before I start the irrigation process. Okay, so we've changed over, we've got an effective rosette, a three-quarter inch hose, we've put the soil wetter on, 
and now we're watering. Now what you'll notice about me watering is that I keep, the, I keep it moving. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up and down here and I'm going to coat, I'm going to put on like coat after coat of water because water seems like to go in slowly in stages. And, um, and this is what we're going to be doing. And, and now, because this water is really coming out of this rosette, it's lovely and gentle, it's not damaging the plant, it's not causing any erosion, um, we're watering very, very effectively. We're getting the job done, but my favourite TV show is coming on, and I'm going to show you how to keep watering and go watch TV. One of my favourite watering devices is a soak it hose. This only costs about $10, and it's one of the most effective things to water your garden. You just roll it out, plug it in, and it, it puts out water very, very slowly, which is how water likes to travel into the ground. And all you do is just drag it along every 15 or 20 minutes and gradually let the garden get really, really wet. I've placed this socket hose in the middle of the drip line so that it waters out this way where the roots are going to and waters into the base because I need to soak the whole root zone to get them really healthy and growing again. A lot of people are afraid to plant in hot weather. In actual fact, as long as the plant has plenty of moisture, they love being planted in the hot weather. You'll notice if you plant a plant um, and then dig it up a week or so later and it's been kept lovely and moist, the roots will be this long in just a week or two. All you have to do is give them adequate moisture when it's hot. And here's how you plant your plant in the heat and take advantage of the fact that the soil's warm and the plant will start to grow immediately. If you plant your plant in hot weather like this and keep it moist within a week or so, you'll have lovely long roots like this. Step one, dig, up, dig, dig an adequate hole. And I'm gonna plant a reasonable size plant, so I'm digging a reasonably big hole here. Step two, I like to add some good quality potting mix. Soil wetter makes watering more effective. Look how quickly the water's just run straight through this plant. It's all out on the concrete here. And then look over here, the water in just a few seconds has just dropped into the hole. If it was plain water without soil wetter, it wouldn't have happened. It's just dropped into the hole and disappeared. And what we've done is we've made a large, a large area now of moist earth which will form a moist cocoon that will tend to stay moist and then when it does dry out, it'll be very, very easy to re-wet with just plain water. So now... Now it's time to plant our plant. Put the plant in. We, put, we fill in around it with a mixture of soil and planting mix. As you see here. So the final step is to soak the newly planted plant with another good dose of soil wetter and water. This plant now has enough soil wetter there to get it right through till the winter and it'll tend to stay moist for longer after you've watered it and then when you do water it, the water's just going to soak straight in nice and deep and keep it moist. So it'll be very, very easy to establish this plant and it'll enjoy being in the heat and it'll enjoy being in the warm soil and it'll start to grow new roots immediately. For information on how to water your garden effectively and stop the plants drying out and dying in the heat, go to hellohello.com.au and you'll find out where and how to get everything you need.